Hi, I'm Valder Beebe, and I host the Valder Beebe Show on FM radio and internet television. I am famously known for that celebrity interview, which I conduct by cell phone, in studio, or satellite media tours. Go to ValderBeebeShow.com, YouTube.com slash Show, or our partnership network with Business in the Black, which is BlackSuccessAcademy.com, and click on the Valder BB Show channel. I'll see you there. Good morning, ladies. I'd like my audience to know I get to speak with Dr. Eileen McCormick, and she's joined by Joanna Johnson, who's a parent of two boys. Ladies, thank you so much for being here on the Valder Beebe Show, live from Dallas, Texas, on KKVI FM Radio. Thanks so much for having thank us. Thank you. Dr. McCormick, will you set the platform about the muscular dystrophy disease that you will introduce or talk to with my audience? Thank you, Valder. Today we are talking about Duchenne muscular dystrophy. This is a form of muscular dystrophy, and in general, the muscular dystrophies are a very diverse group of disorders, but a common point is that they attack the muscle. Duchenne primarily affects little boys presenting early in life with delayed in walking, tiptoe walking, clumsiness, and a very generous calf muscle, which is a very characteristic finding. This disorder occurs in one out of every 5,200 live male births. One of the things it says that uh, the issue surrounding this is the life-saving treatment that remain out of reach. Is that true? This is very true. Duchenne's is diagnosed by genetic mutation. And current therapies today that have meaningful outcome target certain of the gene abnormality. There's a drug called Translarna produced by PTC Therapeutics, who we are here with today. And this targets a specific mutation called a nonsense mutation, which affects only 13% of the Duchenne boys. What role does the FDA play in this information you're talking about? Uh, well, the FDA at this point, our, our concern and, you know, and what we're here talking about today is that despite promising data, um, the FDA has refused to open the application um, for this drug. And uh, as you said earlier, I, I have two sons with Duchenne. They are involved in this clinical trial, and we're seeing real, uh, real benefits. Um, normally, boys with Duchenne lose the ability to walk between the ages of 9 and 11, and my boys are 10 and 13 and, and still ambulatory, still independent, uh, still playing the drums. And normally, you would see boys the same age. These abilities uh, would be gone, and they would be wheelchair-bound at this point. So are you saying that they are not using the drug, or they are using the drug? And that convers that comment came from Joanna. Uh, yes. Uh, so they are. They were involved in the clinical trial, and they continue to receive access uh, to the drug at this point. But until the FDA approves the drug, uh, the concern is that it, at some point, access will go away. The drug company can't just continue to provide it until the FDA approves it. What happens to your children if the drug is no longer available? Well, I, you know, I'm extremely terrified about that. I mean, again, we're seeing real benefits, and um, I'm concerned that if the, they lose access to the drug, that the benefits that we'll, we are seeing will go away. When a parent lives with these type of uh, um, diseases surrounding their life, what lengths would you go to to make sure that your children have an, a chance in life? Obviously, anything. I'm, I'm here today for that purpose. Uh, I, my number one job in life is to advocate for those two boys and for all boys that have Duchenne muscular dystrophy, that I have treatments that can slow down the progression, of, the progression of the disease, and they can lead independent, full lives. Doctor, let me ask, Dr. McCormick, let me ask you, what can uh, the listening audience, how can they participate in, in making 
uh, Joanna's life for her children a little bit better because I maybe their children are suffering from this. Very much so, Velder. So we can become more active within our community, both as physicians and parents and relatives affected. Any interesting citizen. You can write your congressman. You can become active. There is an organization called Parent Project md.org, which carries a wealth of information on their website that we would refer the listener to today. Thank you so much. And I'm going to give you the last word, Joanna Johnson, because I, I, I feel your passion. Uh, I can't walk in your shoes, but I can feel your heart as a mother. I'm a mother, of course. So I do understand that. So what do you want my audience to know? And Lee, what do you want to resonate with them as we leave them today? Well, I, you know, I guess that there's, um, there's always a fight, you know, there's always something to fight to, you know, if, if something happens in your life, for me, it happens to be this rare disease. And hopefully I might inspire someone to look to more information uh, and to get active and, and get involved and, you know, continue the hope because there is hope. I there is hope. There's always hope. Uh, the great man said, keep hope alive. Dr. That's Eileen right. McCormick and Joanna Johnson, thank you so much. And I, Joanna, we will keep you in our prayers. Thank you very much. I appreciate thank that. Thank you very much.